screen. So let me give some context to what we're thinking here is we've been playing with this concept one of a lab where PIs or like just anybody can kind of like add their own lab to research out. And this would kind of be like your lab group. Um, it kind of dives into a feature that we've been kind of working on and playing with and want to get your guys' opinion on of like an electronic lab notebook where people can kind of take notes. And so we were in contact with a lab at UCLA. Um, they have a PI with like 20 different uh, um, PhDs underneath her. And part of the motivation for this was like, the PI wanted a way for people in her lab to capture notes. And then she wanted a way to be able to then go through and look at the notes, see what people are up to, see what they're stuck on, providing feedback. And so, um, yeah, that's like kind of the context of this whole project. But wanted to get everybody's opinions on here. So we would add like a my labs section to the homepage. Um, and then also have like labs um, where you can kind of just search search up different people's labs. Um, basically, we'll let you kind of create your own lab um, and invite people to it. There's going to be some user kind of management stuff, like setting who's the PI, who's the PhD students, who's what um, in the lab. But then like once that's settled, You'll basically kind of like have your own lab page. We're still working on uh, updating the designs for this lab page to be more similar to your profile page, where like in your profile page, you know, you have like a nice photo. You have a big section at the top explaining like who you are, what this is. We're updating the lab kind of page as well to be like that, where yeah, you have it can be like the Anton Labed lab, and then you have a description. You can post an image, put an image there, but just something that makes it look nice. Um, from there, kind of uh, what this specific lab at UCLA wanted was they wanted a way they could um, kind of take notes on projects. So like they would create a project, um, and each person in that lab would be able to like see these notes. And then they'd be able to contribute to the like each project's notes. So like maybe a couple people are collaborating over one project. They'd kind of be able to collaborate back and forth over here. Um, they'd also have their own projects with their own notes. And so they'd be able to kind of take notes on those projects um, as things happened, as they did experiments, as they found new stuff happening. Um, any kind of like jotting things down, um, adding figures here. Um, eventually, we want to get to the point where, yeah, we can add code and things as well and crunching data. So you can kind of like do your work through this thing, but we're not probably not there yet in the V1. Um, the way it would work is that when you would make a note, what we're kind of imagining is um, after you write in this thing, it kind of automatically creates an entry here for you inside of your lab page where it'll be like, uh, yeah, like this person just added a note to this project. And it'll like automatically generate this thing where then people can kind of come to your lab and see like, hey, what are people up to? What are people working on? Um, so there's a concept here where we're making like, hey, sections of the um, lab can be private or public. So um, if you don't want your notes public, you can leave your notes as private, and then they wouldn't show up in this section. Um, we're updating this kind of uh, design here as well, so that like uh, you as a lab can upload kind of the papers that you've published. Um, and let me see exactly the sections we had set out for it. Uh, Publications, people in your lab, and some like contact us section here as well. Um, so anything that the lab would need, want to showcase to the outside world here. Um, oops. So um, 
going through the flow. Um, yeah. So basically, like notes, people would be you like you could also make this private or public in your own profile. Like, hey, here are the notes that I've been taking on the projects that I've been doing. Um, in here, um, we're, we're updating the kind of view for projects instead of being cards like this. We kind of want to see like, hey, here's a project that people are working on. Here's like how many notes they have. Here's how many updates this note has for a PI. It's almost like a PI view of like, hey, here's my lab. Here are all the projects in my lab. Here are some of the updates that we've been getting in. Um, and so, yeah, this is kind of like, there's a lot of screens here. I don't want to go through each individual one um, of these, but um, I just kind of want to get people's initial thoughts. Like, I don't know right now, like whether you guys kind of take notes while you guys are doing research, your own research, you know, um, whether you jot things down in places and whether you share those with people and what your thoughts are on like, being able to view other people's notes in your lab on certain projects, collaborating via this method. It's a little hard to envision what exactly notes are, right? So if, if it's just a wall of text, right, you've been taken as you listen to a lecture, for example, or to someone's presentation, that's probably going to be useless for everyone except for you. Right, because right. it's highly contextual. So the way it's structured right now, they are you, you kind of make them as separate posts almost, right? Not notes. So I don't know. Like 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 if my lab would take notes like that, it's probably not gonna be I take a separate note uh, portion and create a post and someone else takes some notes and take a post. You're gonna work in a shared document. So we don't have to like scroll for 10 separate posts to get the uh, you know the entire picture so i don't know how that fits into this whole idea of creating individual notes for every single independent thought you have so i think the idea here is like a lab notebook i'm not sure if it's the same in psychology but for molecular biology like if i wanted to run a gel like i would have a protocol with all the reagents and then I would like take note of like the temperature and how long I ran it. And then at the end, I'd include like a picture and like what I interpreted the results as very raw, like just for my own notes. But it would be in like a carbon copy notebook where if my PI wanted to come through and see what I was working on, they could walk to my workstation, and like go through the notes that I actually made. Um, the way we're thinking about this is like an individual would have their own like personal carbon copy note thing where they basically just like put all their notes for like their like I'm used to wet lab research. And then essentially these would integrate into a project. So Anton, if me and you were working on a similar project, but like kind of different experiments, um, both our individual notebooks would like assimilate within a project view that the PI could see like, like chronologically what's happening. But me and you would each have individual like Google Docs. We also have this to be collaborative though too, right? Or we, we anticipate it being. Yeah, collaborative, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. As far as I know, all the software for doing this kind of project tracking or whatever, it just has a bit more structure. It has more uh, precise data. It's not just like uh, unstructured text, but it has uh, things like, um, I know, results of the experiment, which experiment is it tied to, uh, just more granular details uh, for a specific need. And there is a reason as, uh, why, like, there are different software for each of the research areas because they all have slightly uh, different needs and they are all just trying to accommodate those different needs. Uh, while this, like, could bring some value for sure, I mean, obviously, people are demanding something like that. Uh, but is it this the right way to start? Uh, like, is this the right starting point? I'm not sure. So I guess another piece of the puzzle here that's important context, uh, this example with the quantum biologists from UCLA, they're in a situation where they have a lot of really talented researchers doing amazing work. But just by the nature of their field, which is relatively new, there's not a lot of available funding. 
So one of their goals outside of just the project management aspect of it is the ability to share like uh, results in real time in order to help build a community and then eventually like in theory attract donors. Um, so like building awareness of their work and financial resources, which is where I think we'll hopefully be able to have a competitive advantage over these probably more built out uh, like project management softwares for science, where in theory, these notes could not just be like, you, you don't just manage your lab, but you also click publish on the ones that you want to be public facing and in theory can earn capital from doing so. I think when it comes to like the actual like niche project management tools, every field of science is so different. Even like Anton, like, like psychology is so different than molecular biology. Like what would even go in these notes is so different. But um, I think we could eventually, assuming this gains traction, build out like field specific, like even, even specific hubs could have their own like version of the notebook that was like tailored towards whatever needs people in that like specific, uh, you know, domain of science wanted. Just to, just to confirm your vision. So you are building this to create more use for RSC, right? So this is something could pay for to get access to like private notes and be more in touch with the uh, cutting edge, you know, results on your specific topic of interest. Is that kind of the direction you're going? To? Yeah, that's kind of the next step. It's, it's sort of like the first step is this like live feed of public facing notes that mm -hmm. like a research lab would want to put out there. And then the next step would be able to have like a Patreon style where maybe I don't want the live feed, but I want to be actually in the collaborative editor, you know, as a, as a purely just pure viewer um, before it's like released to the public. Like there could right. be like, people pay, you know, kind of okay. pay yeah, so that makes more sense. The, the, the entire thing, I think what Dragon meant is a continuation of our last conversation that it's probably unlikely you're going to surpass the quality of the specialized, you know, software in, in the area. But if you push your unique angle and, and you have two, right? So for producer research producers, it would be to advertise their research and share like pieces or nitpicks to make it to make everyone interested about what they're doing and for the users research consumers uh it provides kind of an, a function for rsc to pay for sneak peeks at research so in that regard i think it's a it's perfect right just it doesn't need to be anything complex just needs to fulfill the function that you want it to do right yeah, uh, I can agree with that uh, value proposition is like something like Patreon for science makes much more sense than building as like a main feature within the research. Mm -hmm. hub. Yeah. So, yeah, I kind of want to get a sense from you guys, like, do any of you guys kind of take kind of lab notes like this right now? Does anybody really. in your labs, do any of your labs uh, take these kind of notes or no? When I uh, worked in industry before, there was like a kind of a lab notebook that we had. Uh, yeah, some kind of ELN software, but like uh, at my lab, we don't use any of the softwares, just the Excel sheets and uh, stuff like that. Phil, do you use like a physical notebook at all? No. But maybe that's my lab. <laughs> yeah, everything for us is also it's, everything is so automatized and protocolized, right? So if you if you register a participant, it's already in the system. Everyone knows when they come in, when they finish. Every if you reserve a scanner, everybody knows when you reserved it, when you finish, when you when you start stuff like that. So I, 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 to be honest, I completely didn't, you know, I didn't take into account stuff like you described with uh, Patrick with, uh, you know, you need to describe what's going on in, in I don't know, in the wilds that you're combined or something. <laughs> but maybe for this area, it's, you know, going to be a completely, you know, game changer. Not sure. 
uh, we never used any lab that I was part of, uh, never used any kind of, uh, well, ver like version tracking or whatever documentation. Uh, I know that CERN is very heavy on this kind of uh, protocols. So there is definitely a huge opportunity and market for something like that. Yeah. One thing I want to get to is like, when you imagine, let's say like you guys do use maybe you start to use something like this. Would it be annoying in your workflow to do this? Potentially, yes. <laughs> yeah, more more work without any benefits. <laughs> benefits, like the benefits are key. And the benefits, if the funding is comes through later, right? Like by Patreon or whatever, like I would do it, right? right. So right. like what we need is a cultural change. And what in the example, so like the lab that you're describing right now, looks like on board. If that can fall through and they get funding, oh, right now, I'm not doing these things, but like I want to do it right now. And yeah, you're going to start to do it once you see other people have success doing that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. I, it's, it's in, I mean, for me, I don't even know what, what I would take notes on. Like, participant right. came in, they did the compu computerized mm -hmm. task I programmed a vehicle earlier, you know. I, I, w w it's interesting that when you described it, it in my head, it looked like, at some parts, it's uh, you know just basically you know you know, you're taking notes and creating text files. Yeah. However, there are glimpses of other functionality of more like the lab management or right. like you know Asana, Asana type of thing. Yeah, and I, f I think that can if for me personally, if that was part of this thing, I would use it for that. You think about this way, like uh, it could be very similar to like Kickstarter or something where you lay out the roadmap of your lab. Like in the next year, we're gonna do this projects following up these projects and stuff like that. But imagine like you could partially reveal this roadmap depending on how much you contribute RSC and think about, let's say in three months, there's gonna be one experiment but there is also another option to make another experiment that's kind of like a sidetrack to test one specific thing. And if you get another, if you get enough uh, REC or something by the time you get there, you might do two experiments instead of one, right? So basically, yeah, it's very similar to Kickstarter, right? So think, you know, you, you just reveal the stretch goal and people donate to make it happen. If it doesn't happen, you just proceed with what, with what you planned in the lab before. <clears throat> so that part, yeah. well, <clears throat> it makes sense. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think about uh, what kind of, of publications would you entice people would you publish in order to entice people to fund your lab? You know what I mean? Like there is papers, fine, those are, you're not gonna publish those, but like you want to get some funding, what kind of uh, publications, what kind of posts are you gonna make, Anton, in your case, to get people well, to give you money? Well, the post is interesting. The way I see it in ideal case, like imagine the whimsical we used before, but it looks kind of like a, a roadmap like a tree right with branch and paths and you are moving chronologically through it your lab like you have goals to test this stuff and this stuff but now i would imagine this uh individual plates and individual steps are clickable and when you open them you get to the page that describes in more details like what the, what is the hypothesis and stuff like that or if it already has been conducted it's a uh, past um, milestone then there are results in there so if i would want to advertise i don't know I, it keeps uh, i keep thinking about the example patrick uh, brings up with the fin finasteride right was it with a community of people who just interested in more side effects so imagine i would be a finasteride researcher right if i would just do my own thing maybe i would i don't know develop some other type of molecule or something that's more persistent requires like less frequent application or something but then i could reveal an alternative goal or something like that and uh, and be like yeah I, i'm not going to focus on that but if you want to pay for it we can and this part would be like more extensive uh, data collection on side effects right and uh, in, in this case people will be like yeah please do focus on this it's going to be more expensive so it's kind of like modular you can buy modules for studies in a way 
this is this seems a little bit like the the next step past like mm -hmm. building communities where it's like all of a sudden now that I have like a network of funders who are interested in my work, like I could throw out a pre-registration as like a grant proposal or something yeah. and try and like disrupt grant proposals somehow. Um so so Nami, you're you're pretty into the open science thing. Have you ever heard of um open uh notebook science? where there are like some researchers, it's like pretty small, like there's maybe like 300 labs total that um, just publish like blogs of what's going on in their, their labs. I shared a link here in the chat, but this is sort of what we'd be hoping to help facilitate is like, I, I think a lot of it would be financially motivated, you know, for people who wanna like attract funders or whatever, but also for those who are like open science motivated and just wanna like have a public record of what's happening in their lab, the tools that they're currently using are like, you know, just regular blog software. And so I think we could we could do this a lot better and hopefully like, you know, give them some kind of incentive to do this. So hopefully more people did. I guess is is there have you heard of this in psychology at all? Or is this just all kind of like your biology? No, actually, I didn't see an example. Like, I just have, I'm I having a hard time grasping the concept of this module publication that uh, Chris is also working out at the liberal science thing. But yeah, this is great. Um, so, and but like the always the question is what what can, like what can I share? And we are not trying to communicate that way. That's that's a huge issue because like there's no culture behind it. But yeah, so like we we need training. To, to produce that knowledge in the bite size. And that's also a huge hurdle. But uh, there's an example, if they are training like materials on their exam, and then there's an incentive, um, people might be uh, interested in doing that. But what would you share even like as your lab? I mean, as, as I think as a, as, a, as a lab notes, I don't think it works for psychology. We can share stuff like maybe hypothesis, or we can share a script for a, st uh, for a task. Right, and share. so think about this way, right? Your entire experiment can have like five tasks and you need to program all of those. What you can do to these early subscribers or something, right? People who get exclusive access to your notes, it's not gonna be notes, it's just you, you can, what you can do is you can finish one task, computerized task and upload this script independently of others so people can take a look, you know what I'm saying? Before you finish the entire product or maybe upload some passages from the manuscript you're gonna try to publish soon. Well, yeah, I think you're like on the point, you're just saying like the hypothesis problems, like these like bite-sized information that people can digest uh, would be great. Uh, I'm almost, almost like thinking about like three sections already in like each repo, there's a motivation, uh, there's a solution and what to define. Like that's the kind of like, I can, can apply to any, almost any context I feel like. Because like we want to know that, like we don't want to know like just say people shouting some comment, right? But we want to know like what they think, what they did, and what did they find. Um, as, as those notes, so right, because they didn't look like notes to me. Like if you can create the body of the project, and maybe you can add, I don't know, could you categorize, categorize notes that oh, these are the hypothesis? No, like it would be really nice if it would be more flexible, or you could label stuff more. Right, you can kind of create the body of the research. These are the hypotheses. These are the, I don't know, the 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 script. This is the data, stuff like that. And you could add those chron chronologically. Yes, it it makes sense because it's it's easier to produce those than to produce an entire manuscript. So people can get early access. But it's not notes. It's it's a finished product, just part of it. Someone will have to edit it, right? It's not gonna be notes that I wrote and I'm gonna upload. If I do that, it's gonna be garbage, unreadable. So this is actually kind of an important distinction because we had been talking about thinking of it more in the context of this lab who wants to have visibility into what's actually going on in their lab. And then in the same place, have the ability to publish like specific like pieces of content in order to help build an audience. And so one thing that we've been like thinking about a lot is like, um, do you want people to publish lab notes directly? Or is there maybe something more specific where it's like, oh, let's collaboratively aggregate stuff from everybody's notes in order to put into this one post that's more like consumer facing and easy to understand. 
Um, so, so yeah, just the discussion that you guys are having is something we've had internally of like how to structure this, whether it should be like lab notes or lab notes plus the ability to publish stuff. Yeah, that second part, I think uh, there is no way like a regular cons a regular person can open a biochemistry lab book and understand stuff from there. Like if you understand stuff from a random uh, like biochemistry lab, then you are probably a researcher yourself. So one, one example too, and this is just a very specific use case, N equals one, there's a biohacking community where one person not academically trained has learned how to like genetically engineer flowers because he's trying to get specific pigments that don't exist. And so this is a person who's like citizen science, like experimenting with genetic engineering. And he shares his lab notes through a Google doc and does kind of like that. I use reagent XBC at like, like 50 aliquots of like this solvent or whatever. And um, I don't know if anybody's actually reading it, but he's used that as almost like proof to get like articles written about him and stuff. And so like the average person won't want to read it, but there are very specialized audiences who do and are like, they gain a lot. And he also gains a lot because he gets to like meet people who are interested in his like in-depth work. So there is kind of like two resolutions of like, the stuff that's actually happening, like where experts would be like, oh, this is cool. And then the public facing, we want to bring funders in to whatever we're producing in our lab. That's fair. I didn't think about that part. I mean, I guess like as, as long as the users have freedom to choose their focus, right? Some people can upload just everything, right? I, I, I drank some water today in the lab. Yeah. Gonna post a note about it. <laughs> As opposed to other users who need who meticulously work on this like perfect pitch type of uh, you know presentation to show to all users to, to maximize the funds. Yeah, that's fair. I think um, another interesting thing um, that I'm thinking about at least is that by publishing certain content, you could have cross lab collaboration. And I think I mentioned it before. I don't know in actuality if that's going to play out, but maybe uh, like, you know, two labs that are doing similar things could be posting and they could, you know, on your post, you could have on your lab notes or whatever, you could have people comment and start a conversation. Um, that not sure we thought about that. We have a Vitaly, who's another power user he posts all the time. He works in an imaging facility. And so almost all of his papers, he's like just a random collaborative author because so many people send him data where they need imaging. So he gets like tons of publications as like the third or fourth author. So it, I think it does make sense to have like two different labs to be able to collaborate on one project. Yeah, that may, that reminds me that this probably needs the functionality of tagging and pinging people, right? So if you want someone to take a look at your recent publication or comment or, you know, pull them into conversation, do, do we have, can we have that? <laughs> There's a work in progress. We just talked about okay. that like okay, an hour ago. Yeah. I think, uh, Dragon, you make a great point here, too. And this could be a really good selling feature for when we eventually do try and bring some kind of grants into Research Hub to say, hey, here's why this is better than your traditional grant infrastructure is because you get resolution to what's happening every day. Do you think it would be OK, ethical, ethically, that you know, if, let's say, a certain uh, lab has a lot of its content kind of like behind the communal paywall, like they posted the results to their like preliminary study, but they're right now hidden and everyone can see that it's hidden until they accumulate like a total of, I don't know, 100,000 RSC. Then they will reveal it to everyone. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of cool. Um, it kind of reminds me of like loot boxes a little bit too, where if the results are negative, you know, everybody's like, oh no, you know, but if they're good, then it's cool. Um, yeah, I think this could go in many different directions and we'd, we'd do it based on customer feedback and build what people wanted. Uh, 
Um, Nicholas, it's also interesting that you mentioned uh, the technical documentation. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, I think BioArchive and MedArchive stopped accepting publications that are about bioinformatic tools. Like if it's simply a software tool, you're not allowed to submit it as a manuscript to BioArchive anymore. And that makes no sense to me. So I think that's something we could easily kind of help facilitate. Yeah, there's so much stuff uh, hidden in uh, GitHub uh, that's not like publicly available or readily uh, searchable that um, and, and the RSC uh, point would uh, get them to post it here. Cool. So we're at half an hour now and like definitely happy to keep chatting for a little while as long as you guys are. Um, do you all have any more thoughts kind of in general on these designs and this feature? Uh, and what we should be thinking about um, before. There's just one other thing that I kind of wanted to talk about, or a couple other things. So it seems that in previous few community calls, the focus was on how do you expose science to the general public and, well, obviously, well, how do you integrate business model within it? Uh, I think generally for Research Hub, it's a good approach and like a good direction for thinking uh, instead of focusing on like, I don't know, building GitHub for science. Uh, which seemed like uh, that it deviated more than these kind of uh, things that we are talking today. So yeah, just a thumbs up for that. So, um, thank you for saying that. That's a great piece of advice. Just to reiterate, you're saying you think Research Hub is a better focus on trying to have it be a tool for scientific communication than necessarily being like the infrastructure for where you store your data for your project and uh, like collaborate internally. Yes, uh, so I remember like somebody mentioning uh, how, how do you as a scientist uh, do some sort of activity and then manage to pay for your lunch for the day like that is that doesn't exist yet and it seems that research hub is moving in that direction and that is new and that is definitely a competitive edge so yeah it seems like a definitely like good way to think about it. Very cool. Awesome. So um, the next thing that uh, I kind of wanted to talk about is we're building this hypothesis evidence graph feature. Pat, do you mind just pulling up the picture just to have it in the background while I talk about it? Um, the idea here is uh, people could make hypotheses like um, wearing masks helps uh, prevent the spread of COVID and then add citations that either support or refute that hypothesis. Um, and so there are a couple things that we might do here, but this is what we're hoping to build within the next few weeks. Um, just as like an example, a post that I shared uh, a couple days ago, a question that was like, hey, what does epigenetics have to do with depression? And then I added a paper today, just like browsing through nature, translational psychology. I saw an article that was like, hey, uh, epigenetic signatures can be used as biomarkers for depression. So I went and yeah, exactly, a lot, a lot like site, basically like manual site rather than like the automated Google search. And so um, we're thinking about how, we're gonna build this page out for sure where you can share a hypothesis and have people add citations and comment on the quality of the citations and relevant to the hypothesis. But um, I wanted to have one more discussion about whether you all think it makes sense to have this, I have a post to be standalone where I would say masks help prevent the spread of COVID versus having it be attached to a question where there would be a base research question that says, do masks help prevent the spread of COVID? And then people could answer that with hypotheses that say, yes, masks do help prevent the spread of COVID or no masks don't. And then cite sources to support their arguments in either way. So yeah, curious about overall thoughts here and then the structure of the standalone hypothesis or question tied to hypothesis. Mm, I guess like it would be more fair that if, if it's just, if it's agnostic, if it's just a question, is, you know, how do masks uh, affect COVID spread, right? Because it doesn't prime the users to dig into the direction of that proposed by the question. Like do masks help uh, the, the spread of COVID, 
will will point people in the direction of you know finding the research support and that if you frame the question do masks harm the spread of covid that also po po points them in direction but the opposite one but i guess the biggest thing is that it, the, the the question needs to be kind of answerable binary right it's either yes or no well, well or neither right because like if you ask a question how like you know what I'm saying? Like, if, if it's nicer, like if, if it does something else about COVID, right? It doesn't help pr promote or prevent spread. If it changes the course of the of the illness itself or something like that, you know what I'm saying? So it needs. I think I think agnostic is the way to go, and you will need to delete a lot of posts that are worded in a weird way. <laughs> So by agnostic, does that mean with the question or just hypothesis standalone? Just with the question. Does anybody else have a, a preference there? One reason why I think the um, list or having a question be tied to the hypothesis is interesting is um, having curated lists of open questions just by itself, I think is kind of interesting where like if I were to say, hey, what's the top 10 most important questions in molecular biology today? Like, I'm not really sure what they are. Like, I know what I'm interested in, but I would love to see like every molecular biologist in the world weigh in on what they think is important right now. And so I'm curious if you guys think having like curated lists of questions is also something that would be valuable in and of itself outside of this hypothesis feature. Yeah, definitely. Like uh, this Mimosa project that I shared in the chat uh, talks about a lot of the benefits of having something like that uh, and for, for researchers, for people that aren't researchers but are just curious, uh, for journalists, investigators, general kind, uh definitely has the benefits but it's kind of quite the opposite of what i was mentioning previously like this goes away from what research hub will, like maybe is supposed to be this is kind of a very specific feature uh that requires a lot of community effort uh and yeah i'm not sure if this is the right direction but yeah so i i take your point and i think that makes sense where and generally i think your feedback is awesome because it helps to keep us focused on what we're actually better at than the other projects. But so in theory, what we want to be doing is creating a SciComm tool that helps to pay people for sharing content. And this is more of like a data aggregation thing. And so I guess I'm wondering, one way that I also sort of see this being used is like a lot of laboratories like they're working on hypotheses, right? That they sort of believe and the experiments and papers that they're like publishing um, are towards like either supporting or refuting the kind of like underlying hypothesis that they're working on. So I'm wondering if this could be sort of a tool that labs also used in order to like help organize the information that they're publicly presenting, where it's like, if I'm a lab that works on the spread of COVID, my hypothesis that I'm doing research on is yes, you know, masks help to stop the spread. And I can include citations, which are like other people's research, and then also like experimental data. Maybe I did some like droplet analysis of like somebody sneezing, you know, into a mask or whatever. Um, so, so yeah, through the context of like also public facing of researchers adding information towards whatever hypothesis they're working to in a given moment. Do you think it would be possible to, well, continuing the discussion about the labs, to make it possible that for people to create, like, like right now, the way you present it, anybody can add, add, add relevant papers, right? So like you post the question publicly and people can add more and more papers supporting one side or the other. But do you think you can add the manually curated versions? Like, so a lab, can add the hypothesis they are working on for the past like two years or something. And they only they will have an opportunity to add and remove uh, relevant papers and their own results 
in favor or you know opposing the hypothesis maybe other people can support suggest papers but they need to be manually approved by the lab yeah we're, we're kind of thinking i think the management of this is going to be a little bit tricky and long term might resemble something like a github repo where there are certain people who own it but then there's lots of contributors that like you know add code so yeah in theory whoever posted the hypothesis for the first version will be like the moderator of the page so if people add content that's irrelevant then whoever posted it would be able to get rid of it and then maybe even appoint others to help moderate that can be tricky, right? Because the person it's uh, the, the first person can be really like really biased and can propose something like very socially harmful and will try to cherry pick uh, only articles that support it. Yeah, I think I think there are lots of details on this feature that are going to be trial and error. But this is sort of like the first stab at like seeing, hey, do people actually want to try and organize information, you know, in this format? Generally, I think it's a interesting thing to explore. Uh, but yeah, as said by you, Patrick and Anton, uh, there is a lot of risk and yeah, things to figure out. But yeah, it could be an interesting avenue for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, so it's good to hear from you guys giving feedback on that. That's definitely super helpful. Um, that's pretty much all I had for this week. We also have the power user program, which, sorry, I haven't recruited any other people. I, um, yeah, I dropped the ball there, but I'll uh, try and get more people for next week. One thing I was thinking, and this is if we believe that questions are relevant, is trying to like hit up people and say, hey, add the top 10 questions in botany or the top 10 questions in like uh, psychology, do, do you guys think trying to, because we could do that now with our post feature, do you think it's worth making an effort trying to see if we can get people to share questions that would then be answered with hypotheses once the feature is ready? Oh, there is one that's awarded 15K RC, right? Yeah, he, he emailed us and asked for a new hub. And yeah. hey, add some questions. Like this sounds interesting. It's like a ca catastrophism. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever looked this up before? It's interesting. But uh, yeah, and he added a question. I think that question is thought provoking. You know, I think there's lots of ways people could both support and refute it. So that that's me fit into sort of the paradigm that I think we might end up at. Mm -hmm. Uh, sorry, I'm missing the context for that. Could you elaborate what has happened, actually? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll share a link here in the chat. Um, we had one of our um, power users is a geologist and posts like really interesting papers about like uh, sun cycles and like um, pretty pretty interesting out there stuff. And so uh, they reached out and said, "Hey, you guys should add a." a Catch a, I don't know how to even say like catastrophism hub where the idea is like there's ways I think the world is going to end or something like it's a study of the world ending or something like that. And so we added it and I was like, you should add some cool questions, you know, it's that way it's like an interesting topic and in theory to test out if people would add questions. And so he added a question, which is like, you know, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like it's thought provoking for sure. And I think that like, there are probably papers that exist that you could use to either support or refute, you know, to create hypotheses to answer this. So yeah, one thing I was thinking about doing is spending some time this week and, and even adding to our power user thing, be like 50 RSC for every question or something like research question in your field or open question in your field. And um, I think that's a really low effort way to get people to, to post because it's pretty easy to be like, Hey, what do I think is interesting in my field? You know, I'll add one question to this hub. So it's not totally formed in my mind yet, but trying to do some outreach to try and put together lists of like top questions in each hub. I like that uh, it could be a really great collection on different topics and obviously a curated one. So having that would be cool. 
funny. There are like papers that are published that are like, hey, the top 100 open questions in like like animal science or something. But there's no repository of people keeping track of what others are working on. Funders will do it sometimes. Like we're trying to fund stuff in this field, but cool. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all I had. We have the the gas fees are super high right now. I don't know if you guys have seen the NFT stuff going on, but I'll send out the coins for the past two weeks uh, for the power user program after this. Uh, you, you mean, do, so th how do you distribute them? Within the research hub, or do you add it to the account or do you send it externally? I've been sending it just from our like company, MetaMask. Gotcha. Wouldn't so wouldn't it be easier to distribute via the website itself to avoid uh, gas tax? Yeah, we could definitely do that. It's just so small scale right now that it's, you know, gotcha. that I don't want to use Patlu's time. But mm -hmm. cool. Do you guys have anything for us? Now, I mean, I'm putting together the gift book now too. So if you want to touch base at some point about like the, hey, here's how you can know the rights to your publications. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, sounds good. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate it. It's good seeing everybody. See ya. See ya.